Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Naomi for those of you guys who do not know and I'm here with a special guest. David. Pastor David. I'm really excited for today's video because we're going to be answering some relationship and marriage questions. So I actually made a post on my Instagram story asking what you guys wanted to see next in terms of a video from David and I. And I found like a lot of your video suggestions could actually be answered all in one video because they were more like marriage and relationship yeah. questions. Um, so we're going to answer some of the questions that I got and hopefully it blesses you guys. Obviously, we're gonna be speaking from a point of kingdom and godly marriages, and let's start off with a little prayer, because yeah. why not? Lord, we just thank you for this video. We thank you for this platform that we get to speak to your people. Lord, we pray that everyone may be blessed. Lord, may your spirit move through this camera, to their screen, to their ears. In Jesus' name I prayed. Amen. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Or if you like fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and motherhood content, subscribe to this channel and be blessed. First question we have here is how to resolve conflict in a healthy way within the marriage. That's a good question. That's a good question. You want to start? Yeah, um, I think that it's natural to just want to react. Sometimes allow our flesh to overtake us, yeah. but it's not it's not righteous i would consider praying first before reacting to the person before even coming at them aggressively or rudely pray about the situation even if it's just five ten minutes that you're having with just you and god to reflect on a good response then that's what i would suggest like that's how you can resolve conflict wait till you are actually calm and collective and wait till you know that what you're gonna say is not gonna harm the situation even yeah. more the bible says how out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so we want to make sure that our heart is like correct yeah. and that it's checked before we even approach having a conversation about the conflict yeah that's so good definitely like one thing that when it comes to speaking or talking to someone in a relationship that you're in and just resolving conflict is to understand that although you might be in conflict in that situation, you still want to edify the whole relationship. A lot of times when you're in conflict with someone, it could be a boyfriend, a husband, a girlfriend, a fiance, whatever the case is, mm -hmm. in the moment, you want to speak words about how you feel, yeah. but that actually wouldn't edify the entirety of the relationship, mm -hmm. right? So what you speak in that moment could actually be the death of the entire relationship, yeah. if that makes sense. So um, you want to keep that in mind, as Naomi was saying, like you want to take time to like be prayerful if needed mm -hmm. and like be in the spirit and also understanding where the two of you are coming from. So knowing how you receive communication. Mm -hmm. So for some people, like right away, they have to handle it. But for some people, like they need time to be like, no, I need to think. Otherwise, if I, if I don't have time to think, I'm going to get frustrated. Right. right. So you can't really put your communication style on the other person. Like you have to meet before you even have any conflict yeah. and already plan how do you resolve conflict. Exactly. I feel like a lot of times we think, oh, there's never going to be a conflict. So we never met to yeah. actually <laughs> talk about how we resolve conflict. But yeah. no, you actually have to meet before and be like, hey, listen, when I'm mad, this is how I am. A, B, C, D. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I'm mad, I need a bit of silence, just like even just an hour, just so mm -hmm. I can think and pray. While you might be like, oh no, like I need to talk right away. So my silence, the way I communicate, it can be seen as like rude or even, you know, mm. you even make it worse, but I'm just trying to process it, right? So definitely I would say just meet in before to understand how do you resolve conflict and how do you receive communication? Yeah. Um, and just, you know, having that, having that platform. So yeah. when it does happen, you know what to do. And it's not by surprise. And I love how you also mentioned like kind of what I said about being really mindful about what you speak because what yeah. you speak into the marriage or the relationship is going to affect it. Like yeah. it's a hundred percent. Especially yeah. if you're a child of God, like you know that words mm -hmm. is spirit. So be careful for that. So the second question is what does submission look like in a godly marriage? We actually just saw a video yeah. about this. Um, it was the pastor was preaching on this. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know when he preached, but we saw the video yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, do you want, you want me to go first? Or no, you can explain it. You can explain it. It was so cool how he explained it. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I guess I already, we really inherently knew, but the way he broke it down was really cool. Um, essentially, that the way men receive love is not by saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. That the way they receive love is actually by respect, therefore respect. submission. Yeah. And I was talking to Naomi about it. I was like, the way we love on God is not by saying, God, we love you. Is by mm. actually submitting to what he says. Yeah. So you can't say you love God, but then not submit to what he says, mm -hmm. right? And so in the same way, we know that Christ is a church and then we're the bride, right? And how marriage literally reflect the church and Christ. Mm -hmm. And so not to say that your spouse won't make mistakes, not to say your spouse is Jesus, definitely not. But the way to submit is to first understand why is submission even there and mm -hmm. how is it functioning? So the thing is, like, when it comes to, like, submission and relationship, like, it's a hot topic because I feel like you have two sides. You have... One, the side of the men who mm -hmm. like use that as a way to lord over the woman. Sometimes. Like, sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. I'm saying like the two sides are the bad, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's like, do what I say, A, B, C, D, that's not submission, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, being a dictator is not submission. Then you have a side of like the woman who are like, I won't submit to no one, da, 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 you know, 
I'm, I'm, I'm Miss Independent, <laughs> but you decide to get married, but you're independent, you know? And, and so you have two sides, but like there's actually a healthy middle ground. And I think it can be seen how God treats us, for example. Mm. God doesn't force us to do anything. Right. Right. He will tell you to do something yeah. for the betterment of the individual, but it's really up to your will. Uh -huh. And then the way you show that you love God is by submitting to what he said. Mm -hmm. Right. And so a lot of times you have a conflict in marriages is because the woman is not submitting to the man. And so the man is not feeling loved. Mm -hmm. And thereby, the man is becoming a dictator because he doesn't feel like he's being submitted to. The way I think it should go by is the same way how it happens with God. Is that the man should be like, this is where I, this is what I believe the word of God is for our life. Mm -hmm. This is the will of God. And I'm bringing it to you. Right. Now, it is your decision whether you want to submit. But know that whenever I bring something to you, whenever I'm saying this, it's always going to be for your betterment. Yeah. Not for my selfish needs, not so I can lord over you, yeah. but for the betterment of the relationship. And I think, I'm speaking from the perspective of a man, when a man does that, it makes it so much easier for a woman to woman want to, to submit. submit. Yeah. But you can speak on the woman's yeah. side to see, you know. The Bible says how the woman should submit to the husband and that how the man should love his wife. Yeah. So all those are just a way of respect. So yeah. the way that the woman respects her husband is by submitting and that's a way of showing love, right? Yeah. And the way that the man respects the woman is by loving her. That's a way mm -hmm. of showing respect. If that's what the Bible is saying is the map for the relationship to work, then we should be reflecting with the Bible yeah. what the word of God is saying. Kind of like how David said, it's like when God comes to us and says, hey, you should do A, B, C, D, E, F, G according to my word and to my will. But it's up to you to follow up. But if you don't, don't be shocked when things go mm, left. Don't yeah. be shocked when the word of God over your life is not manifesting the way you expect it because you're not actually following what he said concerning the institution of marriage. Yeah. Now, again, there are some men out there who like to just take the word submission and maybe like flip it and make it seem like it's like, you know, like tyrannical dictatorship, yeah, like you, you don't here. have the right to speak. Exactly. And you have some women who just don't want to submit at who all. Who just don't want to yeah. submit at all. But submission is actually power under control. Yeah. And once you're a woman who realizes how, yes, yeah, submission is power under control. And I respect this man. I love this man mm -hmm. enough. And I trust him enough to submit to what he says yeah. and what he's saying about our family. Yeah. And just the last point is like, don't marry someone that you know you can't submit to. The Bible doesn't say to submit to every man. No to your mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. So you have to really make that decision <laughs> before you get into marriage yeah. that this is someone who I trust, one, who I yeah. respect, number two, and who has the word of God inside of him that I know that not only am I submitted to him, but I'm submitted to God as I'm submitted to him, mm -hmm. right? So make that decision before you get married. Once you're in the marriage, you have to follow the word of God. That's so yeah, I think that's that's how it would go good. by. That's, I think that's a good answer. Teamwork. The next question we have here is pretty juicy. The person said abstinence. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> they said abstinence. How did you guys do it? You know, I was actually just talking to, uh, I forgot who I was talking to, maybe like last week I was talking to a friend and we we're just talking about like dating and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, listen, I, we started dating officially basically like, let's say January, 2017. I think right? that was February. January 2017. Nah, it was, it was February. It was I, had, I wanted you to like wait. I wanted you. I wanted was, to just. We started dating January 2017. Child known. I proposed to you nine months later in September, and then we got married uh, six months later, March 20, 2018. Yeah. Right. And um, the whole thing was like the reason I'm saying this is because I, I, in my personal opinion, I don't believe that people should be dating for five, six, seven, eight, ten years. It's just not wise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you always have anomalies, which are fine. Mm -hmm. But if you really love someone and you're really attracted to that person, it'll be very hard to stay abstinent. It doesn't yeah. matter how spiritual you are. It doesn't matter if you're the bishop of bishops of bishops. No, mm -hmm. it, it becomes very hard because not only you have a physical attraction, mm -hmm. but you have the emotional and spiritual connectiveness. Obviously, you're not one yet, but you have that spirit that you're like now rubbing against your spirit, yeah. you know, rubbing against his spirit. like. It's, you're almost like you're so close to being one, but you haven't yet said you're about so you're not one mm -hmm. and you haven't had sex, hopefully. And so it, you're just basically playing with fire, in my opinion. No, it that is true. And and I can attest to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was trying to get my business. No, you know, child, I can I can attest to that. You know, we even made rules in our in our courtship. We yeah. made strict rules, um, very strict rules like no touching of the thigh yeah. and no like you know no talking in drake hours for those of you guys who don't know drake midnight. hours is like past midnight or 10 yeah. o'clock i think i was extra so i said 10 p.m yeah he said 10 p.m so like that's when all of a sudden the guy's voice starts to drop a bit lower um the girl starts to get a bit more giddy yeah and, you know things just start <laughs> to get a bit too cute right so 
I find that how even in our courtship, at times it was really, really hard because yeah. we obviously are attracted to each other. We obviously do love each other. Um, and yeah, sometimes, you know, kissing is not just always going to stop by kissing as much as that's what you want. Mm -hmm. It's not the best yeah. thing to even do sometimes because you never know where it can lead to. Yeah. And like, you also want to know yourself, right? Mm -hmm. For some people, you should not kiss. Like, you just, you, you know yourself, right? No. Yeah. Um, for, for, that's probably for most people. Some people think they can handle it. Maybe they can. Yeah. But like, to know yourself, but also know the person that you're with, right? Mm -hmm. And have that really honest conversation mm -hmm. that like, it's not even worth tempting one another if no. it can lead to ABCD, right? No. So although you might think that you can handle this, if he can't, which most guys can't, or if she can't, and then don't even touch it like just respect their boundaries just mm -hmm. like leave it at that i feel like when people talk about abstinence they think you do everything but dot 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 and that's you being absent but it's not, that's exactly. really not you being absent no. right those are like everything else can still be a sexual act or an act of sex mm -hmm. part of sex right and so you know you can go five years just doing everything but that stopping at that moment and think you're absent but you're really not so yeah. you should have that level of like i guess integrity mm -hmm. that level of like conscious you know, you're consciously trying to remain pure before God, yeah, right? Yeah. Not before how your boyfriend sees you or your girlfriend sees you, but how does God see you? Basically, yeah. lastly, just imagine that while you're doing whatever you're doing, God is there. Yeah. Is he gonna be happy or is he gonna be? Is he gonna be cheesed? So the next question is questions to ask when courting and dating. I would say everything. I think <laughs> I think nothing is off topic to an extent. Mm. Like I think once again, you're making like think about like even when you want to buy a house, okay? Yeah. They will ask you bare questions because like we're not going to give you a loan of $500,000 or $600,000 30-year amortization if we don't know as much about you as possible. As same with the car, same with even getting into university. Like they ask you a bunch of questions. Now, mm -hmm. your marriage is way more important than all those things. So I don't really think that any question to an extent is off topic. I think like asking about the person's past, like too deep into it. Like especially if you know it's gonna like trigger you or make you. That's like, if you know, like if both of you are comfortable, which most of the time that's not the case, yeah. Then that's once again a boundary. Yeah. But like if you ask about their past and they won't say a single word about it, then that's that, kinda suspect. That's that's suspect. Yeah. You don't have to like that's the thing. You don't have to give the nitty gritty details of yeah. we met at this time and no, you don't yeah. have to do that. But they should still be like, okay, like, you know, you dated Johnny. Okay, I know Johnny. He's yeah. on my street. So now I know you dated Johnny. Now I know. Right? And so now when Johnny's looking at me, I know that's the reason why he's looking at me. <laughs> right? So having a level, and it even goes beyond that. It goes beyond the past. But having a level of, okay, you're about to make the biggest decision of your life. So you need to know as much as possible about this person yeah. to then make a decision, obviously in the spirit, but having that information. Yeah. Because when you get married, you can't be like, I did not know that, yeah. right? Also, um, asking them about maybe strongholds or generational curses family stuff, from their yeah. family. Like, that way you know what you're fighting. Because the moment you become one with that person, like, you're fighting the demons that they're fighting. It's yeah. just, there's no way coming out of it, right? So, yeah. I find, like, just actually asking the person, like, what are some generational curses, whether it be financial, whether it be spiritual, whether it be sexual, whatever mm -hmm. it is that, it go that goes on in your family that I might need to know about before entering a covenant with you. Because yeah. it's very important. Are people getting married in your family? Are they not? Is your dad there? Mm -hmm. Was everyone in your family dad's missing? Like those things actually matter. They actually play a role. They do. Is there barrenness in your family? Is there a cancer? You're like all those questions, spiritual and biological and like physical, they all matter. Like they mm -hmm. actually add because you're bringing two people from different environments, different culture. Yeah. Unless you're married from the same place, but still different families merging together, and you're bringing some of that baggage, also some of those good things from those two families. Yeah. And you should know. I will also think that the primary question to ask is like, okay. How is our purpose aligned? And it's crazy mm -hmm. how people, for some reason, don't ask that question. Mm -hmm. And it has to be like the nitty gritty. Of course, we don't know everything, right? God is still revealing stuff to us. But you should have an idea of what God has called you to do before getting married. Yeah. Because if you don't, then you're making a very, very uh, big gamble. Yeah. Because you don't know where you're going. But then you want to marry someone who's supposed to help you go somewhere that you don't know where you're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Right? Confusion. And that's of the highest order. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so dangerous. Like, if I know that I'm marrying Naomi mm -hmm. and she's not called to ever go to Africa, why am I going to marry her? Right. Right? If you know that you're married to me, but I want, I want to marry uh, Betty, who's going to stay at home making Betty Crocker cakes and never go out. Child, not uh, Betty Crocker. Uh, you know, I'm coming for Betty Crocker. Never make, never, you know, want to have a business, never wants to have influence. She just wants, and that's nothing wrong with that, but she just wants to stay at home, yeah. take care of the children, cook, clean. That's it. That's all you're doing. Housewife. Fine. But that's not for me. That's not right? for us, no. That might be for someone else. It's mm -hmm. not a judgment on what God has called you to do, but 
you have to be meshed with someone that you know that the purpose aligns it makes sense according to the word of god yeah exactly i feel like there's so many questions to ask during courtship but i hope that those ones actually help you guys is it of god to want a relationship so bad i have been wanting a relationship so much lately it depends right you can have a burden to do something for god yeah but that's different than wanting something for yourself mm. right so if what you're sensing is a burden like you can for example really want to move to asia mm -hmm. and be an evangelist and you know it's not because you want to be known but you know it's because god has put that burden on you and you feel every morning that's right. god speaking to you right but if it's like oh i want to become an evangelist because i want to have my posters all around that's you there doesn't mean that god hasn't called you to do it but it means that the desire has not yet been submitted to god yeah, right yeah. and most of the time usually that strong desire for marriage is from yourself it's from, it's from, yeah, from yourself it's from, from the culture push. from the pressure of parents and friends yeah. And because everybody's getting married, everybody's yeah. having children, it just seems like it's the right thing to do. It obviously could be the right thing to do, but maybe not the right moment for you. Mm -hmm. And I think just prayer and actually honesty, like just being honest with yeah. God about why you want to get married so yeah. badly. Like, is it about how it's going to look? Is it about how it's going to sound? Mm -hmm. Is it because you really want to have sex? Like, yeah. what are the reasons for you wanting the marriage and the relationship so badly? Is it because there's a void in you that you haven't really filled yet or allowed mm -hmm. God to fill yet? Because if it is because of a void, then marriage is not gonna fix that yeah. marriage a relationship is not gonna fix any void that is in you only God can fill That's that so, so just reflecting on what are the reasons that I truly want to get married and that I want to have a relationship is it because of insecurity yeah. if it is I need to figure it out now because marriage will only mirror my insecurities yeah. it will only reflect my insecurities right mm -hmm. so I need to make sure that yeah. I am secure in God before being secure with any other person I think one more like one more thing to test and the way, generally speaking, you'll know if it's for God or for yourself is if you tell yourself, if God said that I would never get married for the rest of my life, would I be okay with that? It's like the same thing for anything. If God said you would never have money, if God said you would never have the ministry, if God, if God said, if God said, mm -hmm. if you're not okay with that, then that means that you're actually not doing it for God completely, right? right? You That's have to true. be okay with having everything stripped from you and mm. still be content in God if it's God saying so, right? Mm. And I think that's a really good way of knowing like, okay, once again, you're getting married not for yourself, not for even your children. Yeah. You're getting married for God, for to God. advance his kingdom, to advance his mandate, to mm. do what God has called you to do. So that's a really good way to really reflect upon God. If I didn't get married to Johnny, like, and you said he Who's was Johnny? wrong. Who's really Johnny? They're just, they're just like <laughs> generic names. I don't think anyone here is going to be named Johnny and Betty. So if you are, I'm sorry. But if God said that your little boyfriend Johnny was not the one and you're okay with that because yeah. you just want to marry who God has called you to marry at the right time. If God said you wouldn't get married at 22, but at 35 right. and you're content with that then right. that means that you're like god i'm just here to do your will right like right? you're not rushing it like it's simply for yeah. the glory of god it's strictly for the glory of god when you're when you're older yeah. and you're like maybe like you're okay i wanted to get married at 22 or yeah. 25 or 20 something but now i'm older like how do you how do you deal with that everybody around you is getting married yeah. and you're out here like dang yeah and no you know what 100 percent is hard i got married like at 23 24 but as a caveat i was like okay getting married at 40 50 like yeah i was okay with that so it's i think so i think that's the thing like i think the thing is is that you and i although we got married young that wasn't on the on yeah, our forefront we weren't it wasn't planning like, it like we didn't say like yeah it wasn't know. like whoa when i'm 20 i need to get married yeah. it just like it literally just happened yeah yeah, yeah it happened yeah. and we were doing it for the glory of god and yeah. we just felt like that was the right time based on what god was telling yeah. us and going towards the sub question that you asked it goes back to the point that i made it hurts and it hurt and it sucked right let's say for example you really want to get married and you're like 40 years old yeah um but once again you have to understand what's the purpose of anything you do in this life uh -huh. it's for god it's for god so as long as god is okay with it and it's not like you're missing out opportunities as long as you're following god and he's okay with it then you have to trust him can yeah. you imagine abraham i'm mm -hmm. sure all his cousins all the aunties they had bare children they say yeah, when are you gonna have a child and he's nine years old no child 92 93 all the way to 100 years until he has a promise of isaac yeah but he got to the point where that he was okay with it mm -hmm. and we know he was okay with it because when god said okay i want you to kill the promise that i just gave you after all these years he was going to do it mm -hmm. So he got to the point where he said, God, I am satisfied with only doing what you want me to do. Yeah. It's not about Instagram, TikTok now, or Facebook if you're old head, or whatever the case is. It's just about doing your will. And yeah. that's the framework that we have to have. And it's super hard because of the culture, but it goes back to you. We only do this for the glory of God. Yeah. And once you get to that place, it's so beautiful. Now it gets to the point where God can give you all your heart's desires because your heart is now aligned with him. Yeah. Because you don't know that maybe God is withholding your husband because he knows that that will be the new God in your life. Ooh. If you're really sick, let's go to the next question. Let's go to the next. Ah. 
So the next question is, would love to hear you guys speak on ministry building. Well, that's a deep question. As, a, as just as a quick side note, our pastor, Pastor Kofi Darte, actually just released a book yeah. about ministry. So we're going to put that in the bio. I think that by the time we post it, there should be a website, I hope. But we'll find a way to put it in the bio yeah, if you guys do want to get the book. Way, yeah. uh, because, I mean, we what we're going to speak on, we've learned from him yeah, and, and sure. other people that have been in our lives. But, man, okay. Um, for those of you guys who do not know, um, Pastor David and I are actually pastors. Yeah. We are pastors at Campus Rush Global. If you haven't heard of it, where have you been? Where have you been? And if you haven't heard of uh, YOF, where have you been? Have you Yearly been? conference for young people, whether you're zero age, 20 age, 40, 60, 80, you're young if you're alive. But yeah, so this question about ministry building, mm -hmm. I think in a very concise way of speaking about it is first having a vision. Yeah, you can't start a ministry because you want to. You have to start a ministry because you're called to it and you've been mm -hmm. chosen to do so. Yeah. The second thing is like you actually have to be willing to eat dirt. Like, <laughs> there's no way to go about it. Whoa! You have to be willing to eat dirt. So we, we we pastor in Montreal. We live in Ottawa, so it's about two hours and a half, but the way we drive it, an hour and a half, mm -hmm. away from Ottawa, right? And so for years we would drive, actually until now, we still drive from Ottawa, our house, all the way to Montreal. We minister, we preach, we do all this, we fellowship afterwards, and we drive back. And we used to have services at one point at 9 p.m. We would start, mm -hmm. was it 9 yeah, p.m.? Yeah, it was like, 8.39. Yeah, 8.39 yeah, mm -hmm. p.m. And we'll get home at like 2, 3 a.m. And at that time, I was the one driving. Mm -hmm. So I would preach. Naomi would help me set up the instruments, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We'd have some help in Montreal. Then afterwards, we'd leave around like midnight, 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. Come back 3 a.m., 4 a.m., whatever the case is. I will go to sleep. We'd wake up for work. Go to work at like 8. Yeah. And so you can't be willing to do that if one, you know that's on God who gave you the vision mm -hmm. and who's called you to it. But also, if you're not willing to eat dirt, like you yeah. have to be willing to say, God, I am simply an empty vessel. Like you're the potter, I'm the clay. And I think there's a bunch of different things, like we mentioned, we're gonna put a link in the bio for the book. Mm -hmm. But those two things for me is what I learned from ministry building. Yeah. God is the one calling me, so give me the vision, mm -hmm. and I'm willing to literally eat dirt for the gospel. For the gospel. For the gospel. Hallelujah. I would say that how even us ministry building together mm -hmm. is that we're like a team. Like we our team we do everything together yeah. we do ministry together we do business together we do what, what do we not do together i don't know play basketball because you don't play basketball no, I, don't play, want I play basketball with i don't you want you to play basketball there was one time I that i play basketball against him i let her win don't listen to what she said and i, I won it, yeah so it was that's all okay. that matters oh, okay you won we'll just say she won okay cool. i won <laughs> but yeah so we just do everything together we you know we truly want to give glory to god in everything we do even with um itr with divine influence we we make sure that our heads are are just constantly you know working together yeah. and i feel like that's very important especially if you're if you're a couple if you're married and you're doing ministry mm -hmm. you guys have to be on the same page you guys yeah. have to be open to hearing what each other is saying and just have that open line of communication in order for you guys to make sure that the will of god is being done in the ministry and whatever god has called you to do your ministry or whatever you're building actually will only be as strong as the team that you help create right mm. and so although we started just the two of us we started building a team from that point on yeah. someone who would do someone who do worship someone who would do you know go grab the the rental car and the equipment and someone who would do social media so we built a team and so the strength mm. of the organization now got to the point where we don't physically have to be there for the for the vision to actually move right because you want to be the vision carrier but you don't want to be the vision hoarder because mm. if you're holding the vision that no one has had a deposit of the vision that it will die the moment you die or that you're not there, right? right. And so we've learned that was a good line to be honest. That actually that was, was a good, a line. good line. I kinda of felt You felt the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I felt the Holy Ghost. You, you have to be a vision carrier, not a vision hoarder. Wow, that's good. Anyways, let's continue with that's actually good. I'm happy this that's is on YouTube. Actually good. Prime content uh, with all seriousness. You you wanna get to the point that you can build a team around mm -hmm. that believe in what you're doing as much as you do. Yeah. So that you're present, mm -hmm. although we'll be there, is not required. The vision continues on. We're all here, we're Christians, but yet yeah. Jesus is, not, is no longer here physically. Yeah. So he didn't hoard the vision. He deposited into individuals, into Peter, into Paul, into et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. 2,000 years later, he's still the boss. This last question isn't really relationship or marriage specific, but we'll answer it anyways. Yep. It says, how to get back up during an endless tough season where you can't even talk to God because you feel like he forgot about you completely? It's funny, I was actually reading about it today. If you're in a season where you feel like you can't talk to God, you feel like he's not hearing you, the best thing to do is to keep talking. I know this sounds weird, but think about it. Like Saul, the only reason why he even went to the medium is because he first went to God and God did not answer him. God had already rejected him as king and didn't want to deal with that. If Saul kept talking and repented 
and came clean with God about whatever he was feeling, whatever he was going through, I could only imagine what God's response would be. I could only imagine that God would even just respond to him and comfort him because there's always room for repentance. Yeah. There's always room for God to just to just hold you as his child, you know what I mean? I find that when we feel like we can't talk to God anymore, that he's not hearing us, we then go to other sources. Yeah. Whether those sources be man, whether it be um, Media, social media culture. culture whatever it is we then we then go to other sources to comfort us and then we find ourselves going deeper and deeper and deeper in that season of just despair and confusion yeah. and just feeling like there's nobody there so the best thing to do whenever you feel like you're in a tough season of course have an accountability partner have someone that you could pray with but never stop talking to god never stop leaning on him never stop being in your word even if you feel like you're praying and you're not getting a response from god directly be in your word yeah. he is speaking in his word yeah. he is decreeing and declaring over mm -hmm. your life in his word that is one of the best ways to communicate with him is to just be in the word of god and just read his read his word yeah. you know right. read what he's saying about you i feel like when you read the word of god you can actually almost feel it like comforting mm -hmm. you in yeah, a way yeah you could feel it comforting you when you read when you read the psalms when you read the how even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death he is with yeah. you that is not a lie he mm -hmm. is truly with you even if you don't feel like it he's mm -hmm. there so that would be my advice in terms of yeah. walking through a tough season if you're a human being like you're gonna have those seasons that happens to everyone it even happened to Jesus on the cross when mm -hmm. he said why have you forsaken me although of course he already knew the whole scenario but i think god shows us those moments for us to understand that he can relate to us, right? right? Using those moments to understand the nature of God. Because what happens in those moments, what the devil will make you believe, or even yourself, is you'll forget about the nature of God, right? Mm. So when he's not speaking or when you can't hear him, you'll think that God changed his nature. Mm. But then if you have spent enough time in the word, as you've just mentioned, Naomi, when then you in your spirit you say, No, he still loves me. Although I'm not hearing him, I remember John 3, yeah. 16. For yeah. God's love the world, that if he gave his son, mm -hmm. then whatever problem that I think he can do is much smaller than giving himself to the world, mm -hmm. to die for the world, although the world was unrepentant. Yeah. So you, you have to go back to the nature, because those moments will actually test how strong your foundation was. Because there will always be a period of silence that God will mandate in our lives to be able to test the foundation that we built. Right. If he's always speaking, if he's always doing exactly what we want, exactly when we want it, then there's no growth. Yeah. But then James said that to count us all joy. Yeah. when you go through diverse trials and tribulations for it produces mm -hmm. what faith mm -hmm. so your faith can never grow or even be tested if there isn't a period by which you see that you feel like god has left you yeah right and and so i think those moments to really go back in your word that's why it's so important to be in your word because so in those moments scripture will begin to come back to yeah. the oh no, no no i know i know my situation looks bad but i remember this word mm -hmm. and that and i remember what happened to that girl in the bible mm -hmm. and this kind of bible mm -hmm. and this and i remember job who lost everything but his but his life mm -hmm. but yet god was still there but he was only tested he was allowed him to be tested yeah. for him to be elevated yeah right yeah. and and i find a lot of times lastly i find a lot of times when you're in those moments and i'm not saying if you've been living in sin and you don't want to repent we're just saying that you, you you're not sinning you've repented of all those things but for some reason it gets from bad to worse from worse yeah. to terrible i find that that tends to be the time by which a blessing is about to come, but there needs mm. to be a test. Amen. When you look through all throughout the Bible, Joseph, he had a dream, 17 years of slavery. Okay, cool. He becomes mm. number two. Like all those stories by which you see the elevation is like they withstood the test mm. because they understood the assignment yeah. and they understood the one who gave the assignment. So basically in those tough seasons, always understand the assignment on your life and always understand who gave you the assignment Amen. and that will get you through the entire situation i think those are all the questions we're going to answer today because this video is um, about to be pretty long <laughs> so we hope you guys enjoyed it we hope that it blessed you guys and just before we close in prayer just want to remind all of you guys that we're having a conference in october can we put some like yeah <laughs> by an influence conference the link will be in the bio essentially what it is about is about equipping the saints to influence the world so that means in your school, in your career, in entrepreneurship, in business, in social media, we're meant to be equipped in the church, but we're meant to go out into the world. So yeah. uh, we're so excited that we're going to announce so many of the guests that we're going to have, musical guests, we're going to have guests in business, guests in ministry, all around. It's going to be an amazing time. And the whole point of that conference will be to equip you. Yeah. Not only is there going to be preaching, but we'll have workshops to give you actionable things to do to become who God has called you to be, which Amen. is an influencer for the kingdom. It will be an amazing time, and I promise you, it will change your life. So let's pray. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this time with your children. Lord, we just thank you for whoever will come across 
across this video, whether today, tomorrow, a month, two years, five years, ten years from now, Lord, we pray that they will be blessed, oh God. May they sense your spirit. May they be actually filled with the spirit afresh, oh God. May you help them at the point of their needs, oh God. And Lord, may you help us draw near to you and draw closer to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Amen. I'll see you guys next week with a new video. Peace. Bye.